Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is the living law. Beloved family, our text says, Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if a husband dies, she is free from the law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not the old way of the written code. Romans 7, 1 to 6. The word of God is so rich, I could just end right there. Sign off and say, much love. But let's break bread together and hide the words in our hearts so that we may not sin against God. Our text says, he is the living word. For in the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. The word was put to death, but resurrected to life. So God's word is the resurrection and the life. And we know that every command that God gives us is his law. One of my favorite scriptures is, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Joshua 1.8. The book of the law is the commandments and the word of God. For God is the king of kings. And whenever a king speaks a word, it becomes law. Remember when King Herod promised his daughter anything in his kingdom and her mom Herodias urged her to ask for the head of John the Baptist? And because Herod could not go back on his word because it was law, he had to behead John. Queen Herodias had Herod do this because John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to do so because King Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Mark 6 17 to 20. So even though King Herod feared and protected John from the threats of even his wife, until he spoke a word among the people, nobles, and diplomats of his court that became law, John's life remained intact. The word of God is the law of God, and his word is the living law that we must obey. King Jesus says, do not even think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Matthew 5, 17. This makes sense, doesn't it? Jesus is the word or law, and he came to fulfill himself. In other words, he came to fulfill everything that was said about him by the law and the prophets. In our text today, Paul says the law is binding to those that are living. He used the example of a married woman bound to her husband by the law of marriage when he is alive, but when he dies, she is released from the law. Likewise, we are bound to the law of God to obey it while we are living because when we die, the law of the flesh has no more rule over us. 
We cannot accept Christ for salvation after we die, for then it is too late. But while we are living by accepting Christ, we die to the law through the body of Christ as he died to the law. But because he has been risen, we are also risen and released from the law to the new way of the spirit. That is saying a lot, I know. But all we have to know is that we have two choices. We can die to the law of the flesh while we are living by accepting Christ Jesus as our savior. Or we can deny Christ and die to the law of our flesh when we physically die. In the latter case, we will be condemned to eternal death and separation from God because we are not in Christ. I don't know about you, family, but the choice seems simple to me. Except King Jesus Christ, the word, the living law of God. For King Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whosoever lives by believing in me will never die. Much more.